Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Dive. So fall is definitely in the air. The nights are getting cooler, crisper. It's getting darker much earlier. It's dark when I wake up in the mornings and I love this time of year. And the best thing about this time of year, or one of the best things about this time of year is reading horror fiction. And so today we're going to take a look at Gateways to Abomination by Matthew M. Bartlett. This is the first book I've read by Matthew M. Bartlett, and it will definitely not be my last. I'm really looking forward to reading more. I think on my last video I showed uh, you guys some books that I, some other books that I had already purchased by him, kind of in hopes that I, <laughs> that I would really like this. And I really did. This is a really, really good book. Um, it's a short book. It's novella length. Uh, I think 100, about 150 pages. And that really is my favorite length for horror fiction. I think that's just such a, there's something about the novella. It's like the perfect length to tell a good horror story for some reason. I don't know why, but it just seems to work that way. But what this is not is it, it, it's not a single cohesive narrative. And it's also not a collection of short stories. Um, you might say it's a fragmented novel. The stories, the snippets, the flash fiction in here, uh, the, everything ranges from about a paragraph to, I think, 10 pages at the most. And there are a couple dozen works in here. Um, there's like maybe, maybe 20. But they are all thematically linked. They are all geographically linked. They all take place in the city of Leeds, Massachusetts. And at the heart of everything is this fictional radio station called WXXT. <clears throat> so this is a like kind of a really cool idea that Bartlett came up with is to have the 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 radio station is kind of like a lens through which we are viewing the action. We are viewing the characters and the weird things that are happening in this city. And it's a really bizarre radio station. It seems to be run by some kind of cult that maybe worships some kind of amphibious leech god or something. And they broadcast weird sermons and weird spoken word stuff and chanting and all kinds of, you know, really bizarre uh, counterculture music. And people get addicted to listening to this radio station. The broadcasts make people do things and feel things so it's really cool and that the radio station's kind of tentacles metaphorically maybe literally i don't know are just they're felt in everything throughout the city so i want to just read um, a passage here and this is called gathering in the deep wood and this is the first part of that i was on a stool at the counter at the look diner moving my scrambled eggs around the plate in the coagulating pool of ketchup and staring at my gray coffee when the man walked in carrying his brain in his cupped hands. The man wore a wrinkled gray suit over a pristine white arrow shirt. He was of indeterminate age with flattened dank hair and a skin as white as his shirt. His mouth was agape, his eyes glazed with fear, he dropped down onto the stool next to mine, his legs slackening. Wordlessly, I slid over a bowl, empty, save a few tenacious flakes of dried oatmeal. Without acknowledging me, the man gingerly placed his brain in the bowl. I really like that. That's super evocative. Such a great image. And there's a really powerful opening uh, moment there about talking about this man walking into the store, carrying his brain in his hands. That's a really... That's an image that when you read that, you're like, okay, I want to know more. And then also throughout the book, there are these segments called Uncle Red Reads Today's News. And these are kind of like really small pieces of flash fiction that are kind of written like, uh, maybe it's something like a, a police blotter or something where like just like the minutes of like what's happening throughout the city. And so here's a, a real quick one that I really liked. Hatfield residents report the most unfortunate birth and early death of a baby girl whose features rested not upon her face, but upon her trunk. The yellowed eyes were set low over the lower rib, nose below the navel, and the most horrid distended mouth at the juncture of the thighs. 
The girl was said to have made grave and horrifying prognostications and provocations in a bygone but yet discernible tongue before bearing the wrath of both mother and townsfolk. The minister refused to bury the abomination in the Lord's cemetery, so the infant was interred in the fire in the various remote marshlands. That is super cool. I really like that a lot. So one thing about the book is it, it, it starts off much weaker and it ends much stronger. And I wouldn't be surprised to find that there was a long span of time between the time when Bartlett started the novel or started the, the, the book and finished the book because things really do seem to progress in terms of theme, in terms of um, the strength of the narrative, and also in the strength of the prose. So maybe like some of the earlier stuff was, was written quite a while before the book was finished. Um, it's definitely in the Lovecraftian tradition, but it doesn't read like Lovecraft pastiche. I think that Bartlett really does have his own voice. And I think he's a very interesting author to read. He has something to say, and I really enjoy it. Uh, like I said, I really am looking forward to reading more. I gotta go shut my door. My dogs are, <laughs> my dogs just started playing. Um, and I think, I think he is going to be a really, really interesting author to follow. Um, I have a feeling he's really going to make his mark because some of this stuff, and this stuff was, I think this stuff was pretty early in his career. Um, it's self-published. So this says it was copyright in 2014. And I would say that some of this stuff in here, I actually like more than I do the really early Thomas Ligotti or Michael Sisko stuff, you know, the two kind of like the reigning champions, the reigning kings of weird fiction right now, Thomas Ligotti, Michael Sisko. Um, hopefully Bartlett can continue to grow and maybe reach their heights. Um, but yeah, definitely check it out. I think I'm pretty sure he's self-published, but it doesn't feel like a self-published book. It doesn't feel like just some, you know, He's an older guy. I think he's like in his mid forties, I believe, but it doesn't feel like a book just like, you know, uh, put onto Kindle by some young kid's parents as a, as an ego, an ego project. It doesn't feel like some kids or some parents living vicariously through their children, um, their children's fiction, like, um, oh, what was that? That fantasy dragon with an E, Ar Aragon or something like that. Um, you know, it, it, it feels like a mature work by a serious author and there are very few errors in the book that you um like you would commonly see in a um in a self-published book it, it's tightly edited the it's laid out nicely so yeah definitely check it out this stuff is not expensive either i think this book was under eight dollars highly recommended so that was gateways to abomination by Matthew M. Bartlett. And now I'm just going to take a quick look at a few more books that I've purchased that I'm going to add to the potential reading stack for the foreseeable future. The first one was a recommendation from a viewer, and I think his name is Paul, and I totally forgot the last name, and I can't find the piece of paper <laughs> I wrote it down on. I'm super sorry, but I took your suggestion and I got Stranger Things Happen. Looks really interesting. Um, this is a set of stories that are by turns dazzling, funny, scary, and sexy, but only when they're not all of these at once. <clears throat> so looking forward to doing that by, and that's by um, Kelly Link, and it is a short story collection. Never read her before, because I think Kelly is a woman, I know. Uh, yeah, so I don't know, we'll see. Then I've got two books by a guy named Jeremy Robert Johnson. Now, I have never read anything by this author, and I've never even heard of this author. But one thing I do a lot of is I judge books by their covers. I think the cover is probably the most important thing about a book, because that is what you see, and that is what gets me to pick up a new book. And so I really, really like this cover. This first one is called Entropy in Bloom, and it is a collection of short stories. It's got praise by people like um, Chuck Palahniuk, Publishers Weekly. Inside is an introduction by, um, let's see, Brian Evanson, 
things written by Cemetery Danced, Girl on Demand, Horror Talk. Um, just it, it seems to be a highly praised short story collection. So I'm really looking forward to that. I guess I should show you the cover, huh? Since that's what I was praising. Really cool. This skull just reeks of like an early 90s supermarket horror book, which I love those things. I don't know if you guys have seen, uh, where is it? Grady Hendrix's book. Um, his book on covers, on horror literature covers from like the 80s and, and 90s. It's awesome. Great book. We'll definitely be taking a look at that. That would be a really good one to, to review. Lots of fun stuff in there. And his other book I got is a... Um, is actually a novel and that is called Skull Crack City. So again, really, really nice cover. And the book I'm probably looking the most forward to reading this season is by Carmen Maria Machado and that is Her Body and Other Parties. It is a collection of feminist body horror and um, weird fiction. I've heard a ton of good things about this book so I'm really looking forward to that. One I added to the stack that I've had for a really long time but have never read is by Conrad Williams, and that's Nearly People. Again, another novella. And then three tiny little novellas that I got uh, new. by One by Kalen Patrick Burke. So I've read his biggest short story collection. I think it's called The 121 to Pennsylvania. And also a lot of his um, Turtle Boy stories, which are awesome but that is called Sour Candy. Again, a really tiny little novella here, just under 100 pages, but he, he's a very fantastic writer. I like him a lot. And then The Long Dark Grim Road by Joseph S. Pulver Sr., kind of an elder statesman of the genre, great guy. I think uh, his book Orphan is fantastic, super good. This is a tiny little book. This is only 28 pages. So just probably over a short story length, really. And then a book by Philip Fracassi uh, called Shiloh. Again, another little, um, this is off of Lovecraft Easing Press, both of these. So kind of an imprint I want to keep my eye on because they're putting out these nice little small books and they're pretty affordable and I love the size. All right, so that's going to do it for this review. What am I, I'm reading right now? Um, I think I'm just gonna, I just finished another book, so we'll do that review. And then uh, I think I'm gonna take a look at that Grady Hendrix book, The uh, Paperbacks from Hell, because that's a really, really fun book. So, uh, my dogs came in to see me. I never put my dogs on camera before, so. Here's Amy, the special little mutt. And then my other one is Monty, but he's running around like a crazy man. All right, so I better go pay attention to my dogs, guys. So, all right, we'll take it easy. And if you're reading anything cool this season, anything scary, creepy, or weird, let me know about it. Maybe I could work it in. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye.